Eternal, no need for remedies Fuego chemistry Zarpado weaponry Nada hablado, comunicamos con humo heavily Regenerate empty, dirty energy Purificado, me lavo la mano con every beat uh. El pibe de oro, speaking to Soro We in it like Choro, loco Pomri Un poco de Hennessy Fly kinetic, still magnetic as this ever so be trippy. Isometrics, well connected like Eric B 24 zanahorias, aromatherapy You can't compare to me, Horsha, I'm a rarity uh, Falcons eat parakeets, but I'm this Ashuna Ashuna, 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 Ashuna Easy Hey yo, it's Asana Posted on the Gaza, coke white like Madonna I got it from a farmer Step if you wanna I send them to the trauma Lyrical katanas They don't want the drama I came with the lava I'm spitting up piranhas Run the town like a jogger Drugs in the piñata I aim like an archer Bullets on departure Clean off the llama And threw it in the harbor To me it don't matter The Glock or the chopper Potato or the laser Plain Jane or the water Before I leave the resi I count out the cheddy Put the squeezy by the belly Tell the Lord to protect me Time in the Feddy, still cool with my celly. There's no identity, so my shit's allegedly. If we talking technically and I don't collectively, well, it's bar after bar, I feel like the penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> The Northern Touch Show. Oh, welcome, welcome, man. Welcome. welcome to the Northern Touch Show. I'm your host, Tom, a.k.a. the director, a.k.a. Coach Tom, joined by Thrust OG. One and only in the building, also joined by on the ones and twos, DJ Despair. And our guest today, we have on the show, Canadian hip-hop artist, Nish. Welcome to the show. Uh, what's up, fellas? What's up? You know. Making you know some inroads, man. Making some inroads. So this is a you like our first official, official, official guest, Nish. This is like oh. this is the most legendary moment here because we we did despair, but despair was part of the show. So, but we, you know, right. we gave him gave him his own light. But uh, yeah, man, crazy man. Despair, man. Anything you want to ask? Ask. Get into Nish with man. You the DJ, man. The DJ is always cool. Starting with the man who plays the music. Uh, but that's great. All right, so Nesh, tell me where you from, what are you doing in your music career, and how long you been in it? Oh, man. Um, oh, man. Since, like, uh, just the end of high school, when we started. Where'd you go to high school? school. Which, uh, where'd you go for those people outside of the city? I mean, that, I we're national. I went to art school, art school, high school, Wexford. Uh, uh, yeah, and so- we- Bro, yeah. Oh, and yeah. um, base. What's up? No, no, I said that's dope, 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 dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, met a lot of, connected with a lot of people there, and uh, yeah, started from there. Um, met Corey and Alwyn, Black Hat and Corey D's, and then uh, started a crew, and then met Lyrical Coalition, for Mono, and then yeah, everything started from there. You you were there, so you were initial, right? You were the, you were there, the core, the core of mono, right? Like right at that that moment. I know I, I've interviewed, I talked, you know. Obviously, we all came up sort of together, but I, from what I know, Dan, uh, you, Wyo, core, yeah. you, yeah, yeah, you're the core, you're the original. But then it expanded after, right? It got a little bigger after, right? You know how it, it got went? a little bigger, and then it got cut down a bit, and then um, yeah, and then the the, the core members stayed, yeah. So when I think did it was you like start? 11, 11 at one time. So when did you start exactly in your music career? Probably started recording, I'd say last year of high school. Uh, yeah, Corey hooked up studio 
with S blank. We were talking about, I was talking about it with thrust before. Um, and that's where we started recording, man. Mornell. And then he moved. So we went to Lawrence West. So that's where we did all of our first recordings. You took that long journey on the bu- on the bus, man. Oh, you just went right across, right? Was oh, that one brutal. bus? It was brutal sometimes at night. <laughs> Get it home, the connections, right? You yeah. miss one of those, you miss one of those buses, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's the dude. the subway, man. subway ends, and you still got to get back to Scarborough. It's tough. Oh, yeah. I, well, I, I used to always be downtown, so I know I have to come check you guys out east. So I always go up here, like yeah, Finch, I so I know I, right. I was always a, I was a TTC master, and then I got blessed with cars since I got to like eighteen. I don't know how, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But we remember you. You used to do the. Were you were you in on the? Uh, this is for the Toronto man's them. Uh, but they probably did in a lot of other cities. I don't despair. You can see if you guys did this. I know, I know, I know. Uh, awesome, know what I'm talking about. Did you do the art class to get around? You know what art classes? We take take all those TTC stickers. Remember, the, they used to be the paper. They had those paper, no. the paper. Oh, we used to take it in, in art class and they get the cardboard, right? Get yeah. the cardboard paper, and then you peel the. You don't want to get wet. You could peel it in half. Oh, you know, the like, the paper, the tickets, the tickets, man. Yeah. So yeah, in high yeah. school, that was how we got around. We split oh, them in shit. half, and then we put cardboard on the back, and then they had the slide thing where you slide. Look at look at okay, he laughing. <laughs> he had the slide <laughs> with a slide down, right? You know what I'm talking about? The TC yeah, bus. The thing with, it had that thing. We put a ticket in. So you said they yeah. had a hand with a swoo. Yeah, slide yeah. In. But every once in a so while, it would flip. It would flip. You had to just <laughs> yeah. You, you only see the one side of it. You only see one side of the ticket, and then it would just <laughs> yeah. It was that metal, yeah, the metal right. box that you had uh, that you yeah. put it in there, and it would slide down a little bit. Yeah. See, I figured that out when I was going to school in Saga because uh, what we did is we peeled it and then we used both sides. Yeah. So we'd fold it in half and slide. It yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very similar. You, you all figured it out. But in no way, in no way, do we condone any of that stuff happening today, right? Well, you can't even <laughs> no, do it that way now. That, it's not even like that now. Like that was that era. Yeah. That was that era, man. Oh man, that was. Yeah, we were slick, and we had a, and we, too, man. People, or you, were, or you people were printing those off too. What about the emergency transfers? They give you the emergency transfers if the bus is messed up. But if he was cool with a certain route bus driver, like we were, he'd see us and he'd just give us a thick stack of them. Oh. You know that yellow transfer? You could just yeah. go anywhere with that. Like with the bus breakdown? Yeah, man. There's all those kind of moves. So you got to be good to the bus drivers too. Yeah. They hook you up. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, man. So what time frame are we talking about? This when you said, uh, just so people know, um, you're talking about high school. Yeah, and, probably and, like and breaking uh, the recording. 98. 97 98 and you mentioned yeah. s blank s blank yeah. well, that's a dope name you mentioned um a lot of people don't know um nationally uh, that's one of our like pioneers and he doesn't get mentioned enough nope. well he definitely uh just mentored and laid a platform for for so many artists you know, coming out of Flemington yeah. park he was like the og of flemo and yeah he could do everything right stanley could dance yeah. he could sing he could rap good everything he did was good man and if you look in the Skylarking video, I actually bucked him. So you'll see him up in there, man. I, that was the first time I seen him in years. That's man. right. And yeah, I, yeah. That's why yeah. I mentioned him to you. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even yeah. know. It, like, there's one of those things we knew each other, but I didn't even know that's the core. But I'm not even surprised because he had his hand at everybody's career from Wes, Maestro, all the way down. All of us went through S. Blank, man. So we got to salute S. Blank and the Fleming, the Flemo OG, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh, uh, Director Awesome, you sitting there? I know you got you to gotta have something you got to ask them there right here. You've been, you've been oh, excited no, you, about this interview. Yeah. You know, you, you got your start um, doing your recordings in hip hop. How do you how do you get into that mindset of this is what I want to do? I want to do the recordings for hip hop. I want to do this kind of music. Um, was it just something that you grew up around or was it something that uh, you fell in love with in high school? Uh, how, how did that all get started? Um, it was more like um, messing around in like grade eight. Like I think one of my friends bet me that I couldn't write like a ver- like a Das Effects type verse or something like that because we were always tripping on how amazing Das Effects was when they first came out and I did it for fun and I and everyone just kept making me do it over and over so, so um, I had fun doing it and I think most of it is just like how friends respond to it and that made me kind of keep going because they were into the same exact music I was. So that's why I just kept going. 
it was, yeah, it was all friends basically in high school. That was the major thing was all my friends pushing me and then meeting people like thrust at one of my first performances and him being positive. And that was huge. I was, I was good. I was going to bring that up, man. I was going to yeah. yo. this is crazy story. I don't know if you guys know, man, like when Nish the first time I knew who Nish was, because I was cl- at one point, you can even ask. It's weird. I have a connection with Mono. At one point, I was sort of managing Earth, mm. like co-managing, not on contract, but like Corey would always they live close to my house and stuff. And the symbol of rest in peace, son of soul. Oh, no, we all in the same area. Right. And yeah, so I always knew everybody. I knew why because why was messing with DJ X when MVP came out. We was always right. at the crib of Courtney and everybody's chopping it up. So I always had a close tie. But I always seen oh, who's this dude? And then this guy went on the show. Where was is it Spectrum? Was it Spectrum that uh, show? I or is it, or was it or no, I think it might, it's Opera House or Spectrum? It was one of the two. I think it, it might, I think it was Opera House. It was Opera House. It was Opera House. I remember the moment, dude. And, and let me tell yeah. you something, despair. Let me tell you something awesome. This dude, I wish I could put you in that Doctor Who time machine and take <laughs> you back, man. Like, take you back. Back to the future, DeLorean. This guy ripped this show. I don't know, all these artists. I don't know what, it was like a showcase, wasn't it, Nish? It was like a showcase, yeah, there was, yeah, I'm pretty sure there was other mono dudes, but there had to have been other mono dudes. There was, because yeah. I remember, I, think, I remember Ghetto Concept on the, I remember it was one of those, I have a good memory for shows, but, um, and this dude came on the stage and just, just ripped it, dude. I'm talking yeah, about, to me personally, it was KRS rip. It was KRS rip. But <laughs> because, because Toronto is Toronto, Toronto eats yeah. Toronto, the, there was the stigma. And then they're like, hey, this is, he's Asian, right? So they're like, oh, Asian persuasion. They ain't never seen that. So it was like this shock factor and then there yeah. was boom and, and, I, and I remember nobody said it was almost like this weird thing at the air at the end of everybody knew and there's this whisper and I went right up to it and I said yo yeah <laughs> I don't remember what I even said to you you could tell me but the fact that we both remember it is really amazing man no, you yeah, didn't tell no, me this one like yeah, a year ago you, you you I think you performed too man and then I um, might perform that night. Yeah. I can't even remember. I was so into your performance that you killed it, dude. You yeah, heard out. that was the best, dude. But yo, you came backstage, we were all chilling, and yeah, you gave me huge props. And I was just like, fuck, man. Yo, this is dope. Thrust just gave me props, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, no, that, was one you, of the, that was one of the No, we you know that's paying it forward, man. That's hip hop, man. A lot yeah, of dudes yeah, are scared yeah. to put put their thing on the line. That's what I got every time. You know what I mean? So I always made sure I, I played that for it. If someone's yeah. dope, I tell them. I'm not scared to say dirty. Yeah, you know? man. Like, you know, a lot of people don't like to do that. But if someone's dope, I'm always, like, positive and, and I'll tell them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like you say, I don't man, even, like, honestly, even, even if I don't like you, even if I don't like your personality, dude, I'm, I'm that real, dude. Like, you yeah. don't like your personality at all, I will go up to you when you do something great. And I say, yo, you kill that. It doesn't take yeah. anything away from me, man. And because when you see greatness, I love greatness, right? And I think hip hop is yeah. about greatness. It's like your verses, everything, your craft, the way you craft, and, and, and that's and, and that's the way I like. I love that stuff. That's what I like in sports. That's what I like on television. That's what I like in the movies. You know, that's what I like in my life. So when I see it, you, I salute it, man. And and that was yeah. amazing, dude. And, and yeah. it's funny. It, it's ironic because look at the career. Look at everything you laid after that. It's like it was there, man. Because you actually took it from the stage and put it in the studio. But that's the harder. That's the harder part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, How did you, you when did you, you mentioned two of the, yeah, go the, ahead. the groups there that you were talking about was Ghetto Concept and MVP. And uh, I think from our other show on Pod Jerky that we mentioned that uh, I went to high school with uh, one of the guys from uh, Ghetto Concept. Um, and that was uh, Quadro. And uh, MVP, I still remember. And I have it on my, um, on my phone, their, their freestyle that they did on uh, Much Music. Uh, Yok uh, as well, and uh, man, that I, was that crazy, was wasn't it? So good. Why, was MVP so was good. crazy, dude. Yeah, they were. Hey, I see yeah. Courtney. Uh, who am I forgetting? What's the other days? I've forgotten Courtney and um, who am I forgetting? Oh. This. Oh. Yeah, man, I was seeing him so long, dude. Yeah. Yo, I love those dudes. I love y'all, man. If y'all watching, love you, dudes. You know. Yeah. I, I, I caught up with Courtney lately, man. Courtney and smile, man. But yeah, they're live show, right? The live show, man. Woo. Well, we. Me, even meeting Wyo, Wyo and Dan, even just meeting them for the first time too, they were like, to me, they were like Toronto rappers, celebrities, because like you'd only see them on much and hear them on CKLN. And, you know, that was big for me because I was a super head and that's all I listened to was CKLN, Power Move, you know, that, that was that was it. That was our like stretch and Bob Edo kind of show, you know? 
So yeah, it was. It yeah. was our, our that was our Saturday salute, your Saturday stamp. You know what I mean? Your stamp of it approval, man. It was the best, man. I loved it. So so uh do you wanna uh do you wanna touch on like what the progression, like how do what happened from from mono? How do we go from mono to like Cedar Hill? What was the transition there and what took place there? And how did you and Lance really um build from that? Because Lance was landscape was always landscape's the producer for those people who may not know. Uh yeah. anything you see, Cedar Hill. Um and most of Monolith too, right? He did like most of the production in, within the yeah, camp. He, too. Not, he, did a, he did a lot of it. He did a, he yeah. did quite a few things mixed in with um skiz. Exactly. Ooh. Charisma, which charisma. Is, uh, I was gonna say charisma bounce, too. Yeah, bounce productions, and then exactly, you know, Black Hat and and, uh, and Corey D's with the you know like crazy Earth production, that kind of stuff. Well, actually, so, yeah, you know what? Bef- you know what? Before me rephrase my question, why are you saying that? Because no one ever asked you guys this. So we all as a typical. What did you learn? Because being you, you guys were part of the first like real. If you want? I don't want to call. It, I guess crew like Juice Crew type type group mm. like what was the strengths the minuses and the pluses from that you took from being immersed in that for that period of time before you moved on to where you're at because you must you guys like just must have gained so much you know just hanging yeah, with that many well, mcs producers group, rappers right yeah it's true so being in a group full of dudes like when i first joined i was freestyling because it was a big thing back then um and everyone could freestyle a monolith ridiculously, like, like it's nothing. So I had to obviously get to a certain level, you know, because you want to add to the sites and the sessions and all that kind of stuff. So obviously made me better um, writer, freestyler, um, just being around everyone making music, like everyone was different. So it was cool to be around everyone's own vibe. Like, it allowed me to basically, you know, figure out my vibe and um, and just get down with everybody else. It was it was a good thing. And yeah, cause I, one I, of, I, I, that's dope. I find when you have that that I find I've I never part of group, but I've always been part of collectives. But the, the yeah. seeing everybody else's recording process, even yeah. though you don't do it in the same way necessarily, it just it's just it's inspiring and it casts it strength. It I find totally. it strengthens your it strengthens your own process. You know what I mean? Yep. Sometimes too, when you see it, yeah, it's dope. Yeah, because if you hear Wyo, he's completely different than me. And then there's like Dan, who's different than like Earth. And like we all have our own vibe, but we all vibe off our own music because it's all good music. So that helped, mm-hmm. and it was it was amazing to see everybody drop their first shit. You know, because you know how first albums are. It's usually you know, songs that you've crafted for a while or it's the stuff you've been, you know, dying to drop. So usually first albums mm-hmm. are like monumental. So I exactly. got to see all that stuff. IRS, Dan, Wyo, you know, Richard dropping singles, Skiz dropping singles, Lance doing the beat battles back in the days, like traveling places and doing them and stuff like that. It was dope, man. Everyone was busy doing stuff. So it's good to be around that because it's, you know, you don't want guys that are just like sitting around not not making moves. So it was good to be around a busy crew, basically. Yeah, yeah it's like music. It's like music boot camp once a week or something. Like you go in, you got it, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that and, next and, level. And where does your then, where does your inspiration come for the music? Like to write a song, to write uh, lyrics. Uh, where does that all come from? Uh, always hearing something else that I love always inspires me um, more than anything. I think. Yeah, new music, uh, new beats. That's basically it. Other than, like I said, my crew around me or my friends. Yeah, that's basically it. I get the vibe from, um, you know, the certain dudes that I listen to or just, yeah, just new good music, whether it's beats or or rhymes or both together, which is even better. Um, that's where I get my inspiration from. Yeah. How did, how did you... So how did you, that's interesting you say that because I'm the same way. And now we, we're at this time period with hip hop where there's like, you got the, you know, you got the trap vibe, then you got the authentic vibe and you got the, the hip hop reggae vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you, there was a period where what well, we do, there was no like Griselda S type group out there being represented. Mm-hmm. How did you get through that 
that period because I found that was the hardest period to get through because even being creative, because I'm like that too. I vibe off of, okay, Red Man wrote a dope album. Okay, I'm going to go back and write. Okay, Buster right. came out, did this, I'm going to write. Oh, I heard Nish drop the track, I'm going to do that. Even within our own city, we had that period where we was just like, oh, Sox did this. Oh, man. Oh, man, Red Love Life it. did that. Oh, man. Love that was the best point. So we just going back for Boom, boom, boom. We was, oh, Frank did this. Oh, Dan did this. You know what I mean? Like, you were just, it was crazy, right? Yeah. And it was like every week. And it, it was just that, that um, I call it cre- uh, friendly competition, too, which is good, too. Yep. Yep. Like, it raised the bar and the craft, man. So how did you get through that little in-between period when that wasn't, like, nobody's head was really popping out like that? Did you go back to your classic stuff, or did you just, was that the period when you guys, I have a feeling um, that's the period you guys really cemented Cedar Hill. Yeah, that's pretty much. Like. Like, Lance asked me, um if I was busy with anything and he was making a mess of beats and we wanted to switch it up a bit and try something, you know, a little different, not like super different, but um, Lance actually had to like chill on production. Cause you know, you listen to some Lance beats and it's like, um, he's very like technical with his music, mm-hmm. with his, his production, the way he, he layers, like drum sounds ridiculously and and you know his um just like his yeah just the way he does that so when we did this stuff it was a little bit more not as technical a little bit more just simple you know because he you know like um chopping loops and and that kind of stuff we were were more (laughs) getting into (laughs) than doing the whole boom bap style where it's like you know like smacking drums over the stuff like he was just kind of like doing minimal drums and like letting me kind of come out to the forefront a bit and uh, we did a couple songs and it worked out so we just kept doing it and um didn't expect anything crazy right away you know but slowly uh kept making stuff more people were into it and yeah now we're at this point that we're at now what, what was that? How, what was that? What was the joy? Because you guys had a cool moment. I remember it was like it was a. Uh, all of a sudden, Primo was just playing playing one of y'all tracks, and you yeah, guys didn't I even you guys didn't even solicit it. You still to this day don't even know how he got it. Like how to tell me that story and the song. Let the people know what that was all about. Because y'all been on the show, what about four or five times in the last little while now? You know, single for single, yeah. and it's been yeah. dope. But the first one. That was a cool moment. I remember I talked to Lance and I was like, yo, I don't even know how how he got this. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I know Lance did a um like a DJ blast, right? But there's obviously some DJs that you just can't get a hold of or you don't know their personal emails or whatever. So he just put out a blast, and I guess, you know, through you know, DJ share. Uh, DJ probably folder. shared a file. Yeah, it's a lot of DJ or share whatever, files. Yeah, you know, yeah. stuff or whatever, or maybe there's a main folder everyone listens to. But yeah, I guess um, they got it somehow like that. And I was chilling and my friend called me and he was playing me the clip and I was like, what? So I'm serious? That's crazy. And yeah. uh, and then a day later, my boy, Gam- shout out Gam Shooter, he, he sent <laughs> me a, a video of him uh, doing doubles on his show. Uh, like a video on uh, IG. That's, that's, that when, was, that's when you trip out. That's when you trip yeah. out. That, yeah, that that's, what, that's one of those moments where it's like, hey, man, all the blood, sweaty tears, all the late nights, all the TTC tickets flipped up on the side. It's all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Primo. That's dope. You know, Primo, right? So. Excuse me. Check, 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 check. Oh, yeah. So what's the <laughs> DJ saying? What? Okay, well, speaking of that, that's the DJ saying, hey, it's time for me to jigga, jigga, jigga. So we, let's break in. Uh, take well, in, since we're talking about this, the track, man, we might as well play it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, we, well, that's not the track that he... That, I know the track you're talking about. Yeah, track. the track he talking about. Yes, I don't want to keep the listeners because we'll, we'll, we'll play a Cedar Hill a Cedar Hill track uh, with a special guest and then we'll come back with some more special guests and special announcements, I guess. Then. Cool. DJ Despair. Nish. Northern Touch Show. Let's Excuse go. Me. Check, 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 check. Director Awesome in the building. Whenever you're ready, you the pipe pipe. I'm just doing the host of the most stuff. Treating this like it's like it's college radio, but it ain't. <laughs> That's what editing's for, right? Exactly. Check, 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 check. Yo, you recording this? Yo. Yo. Steve Austin. Yo. Yo. What the hell's going on here? All right. 
I don't know. But you know. You see, there we go. That when I rhyme, I'm not a nice person. And I like cursing. So from this, you'll get no clean, a nice version. If you want me to play a song, I got you. I'm just about to. Every track should be what a champion fight is walking out to. So we out you like those pre rolls filled up with that bottom shake. My lines hit like a drum kit on a John Bonham break. We dominate like a giant flying piranha snake. Then smoke your body weight on a daily marijuana break. So keep your sticks and pebbles, I'll smoke the Monterey. You smoke seeds and see more pops than a father's day. Let's show you the hot. Todd Gill. Every time I spit, I tick. To show you what's hot. See, I'll admit that when I rhyme, I'm not a nice person, and I like cursing. So from this, you'll get no clean, a nice version. If you want me to play a song, I got you. I'm just about to. Every track should be what a champion fight is walking out to. So we out you like those pre rolls filled up with that bottom shake. My lines hit like a drum kit on a John Bonham break. We dominate like a giant flying piranha snake. Then smoke your body weight on a daily marijuana break. So keep your sticks and pebbles, I'll smoke the Monterey. You smoke seeds and see more pops than a Father's Day. So take a draw before I'm dropping these bars. Only rock team hats that have Japanese stars. Only talk to family members driving Japanese cars. It's niche, I even roll L's like Japanese R's. I make moves that are worthy of a replay Where your song sucks like holding in a shit you're in a BJ I can't let you run, that ain't fair Steve Austin, got you in the square Look at these niggas, practice Entertaining, but they lack theatrics I leave you flat on the back here, yeah Come back with the rack here Get the bounce, your girl on the mattress You just a warm up, you just practice Woo. Now for all of those, all those that are wondering, that's show you thrust and uh Nish from Cedar Hill. And uh I know we played that a lot on uh, either our show on Pod Jerky. Uh we played it on um Instagram all over the place. We advertise that show uh, don't the, stop the, that it. all over. I don't stop playing it. Yeah, like serious. Since Nish came back, I've been happy because when I first saw him pop up with Monolith, I was like, Who is this guy on Take It to the Top? <laughs> Like he just came out hungry. <laughs> like, yeah. like it was just like rhyme was, animal, just, man. He's a rhyme yeah, animal. You gotta understand. We knew who Daniel was and everybody else, but when he came out of nowhere, we we're just like, whoa, who's that? <laughs> it was just like, and then you beat every Asian in Winnipeg, like what a rap. So I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> so and it was just like the biggest <laughs> movement that happened after that. <laughs> I know, dude. That's why I said that story when he came on the stage. Do you you can imagine this pair when he came into hey that show man opera house. Well, I've man. seen them at a monolith show. I've seen them when they were here too. No, I mean that first time, like you said, the oh. first, like you said, the same way you just said it with that same exact energy. That was the same thing I was saying. Because he just came out. I knew he was, but they didn't know who he was. You know, you don't see it. So first I'm like, who's this? Oh, uh, who's this Asian got come out here? You gotta stay at Toronto them times, right? Nish, hey Nish, man. They don't know. Yo. <laughs> when you come yeah, out there, no. man. That was different era, what I'm man. Saying, like, you just you come out Toronto. like this. Are you like, yo? And then what's he gonna? Do? It's almost like they was like, what's this guy even doing on the stage? What's he gonna do? And then by the first, oh my gosh, <laughs> it was the well, best. Well, that's what man. I'm saying. Like, it was like the you gotta look at you guys at the Toronto scene when there's and like guys like Kish and certain guys came out. They knew who they're competing with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, and they held their own. Like, there's a lot of people that couldn't hold their own in Toronto outside of that scene. Like, you had like the heavy hitters that was rolling together. And no, if you don't understand about that scene, is you had no choice. Not like now, everybody can hide at home. Y'all, y'all hiding, y'all hiding. If we don't like you, you guys can hide it now, Toronto, because you're not proving yourself in front of, in front of our people. Everyone got to get proved, man. I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you straight up, man. Even chaos, man. Chaos came out of the show. He got pulled right off the stage, man. First show, man. I heard about that. Fleming yeah, I heard in the park. That. I was right there. Hey, Flemmo, my OGs, man. Right. That there's was, some mess. There's some mess up that. story. And he said that he grew up in Fleming in part. And I think it was at either one of the first honey jams or something like that. He did a show. I was right there. So I'll tell you, I seen it like pull and Toronto's famous for that forever. Like we don't like you. You're getting pulled off the stage. Oh. You are getting things. So it's almost like you can say you're coming out to be a rapper, but we're going to tell you if you're going to be a rapper or not. And the artist, and, and, they, and every show they will can you boo you, whatever. So we had that period for a long time. And I think that's why our artists that, is from that little time period have a lot of staying power 
That's why I think we have a stand that people people don't understand because we've been tried and tested so hard, right? Yeah, well, Toronto crowds are like legendary, brutal on people. Oh yeah, I don't know how it is in like the rock scene or whatever like that for hip hop. It's it was tough, man. Oh, it was the Apollo. Like remember my, seeing remember my dude, man? they got bottled bottled out, man. I remember Prodigy, rest in peace, Prodigy. Well, the first time they came, hey, you never think those dudes would ever get booed in Toronto, man. They were so everybody was so like Mob Deep Capital, man. But no, nope. they want to forget some lyrics, kind of chop up the show, get too drunk. Yeah, woo, right down down Esplanade, man. <laughs> oh, I you said it was a full house too. They, they duck, jumped off the side of the stage. Woof, I see Prodigy dive, man. Bottles, cans, everything flying, man. No, you can't come here and do that. Yeah, your city's known for that. You man. can't come here and do that, man. Don't give us that garbage. We you, love you, but don't bring that. I heard there was a group that went out there and did some rap style that they didn't understand. And they actually, you know, people were throwing bottles and shit at them. And they were like, dude, every, oh, that was man. every show, man. How do no, you survive me, in Toronto? Like, let me tell you this, dude. <laughs> you can ask Ron Nelson. We're going to get Ron Nelson on here. And I'm going to tell you right here, right now, what happened. So many bottles would get thrown at our local shows for the first like 15 years of our scene that he had to stop selling bottles at the live shows. So he would just take all the bottles and he stopped and he had to start using paper cups. Crazy. Imagine, imagine that's an extra thing you have to do. Remember, you get there, you got all your drinks there, and he had to empty them all. You know what I'm saying? Take all, yeah, yeah. man. Normally you just get the bottle, like boom, boom, boom. No, because the bottles was fly. Oh, yeah, it was like you, you know that. What's that movie with um uh, uh, Roadhouse? Is it Roadhouse? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like oh, Roadhouse yeah, sometimes. Yeah, That's fishing. the best movie I could tell you. Twan was like Roadhouse sometimes. If they didn't like you, it's raining. Roadhouse, man. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well, but there was no mess up. No, uh, you know they had that cage. The cage was yeah, there. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best wasn't there though. <laughs> Yo, The Walking Dead. That's why. It's a place that we safe, man. <laughs> but yo, Niche, man. Um, shoot. What's up? So when did you um we went through the song, we talked about um pretty much everything, but when did you and Lance officially um say okay, this is Cedar Hill? What is Cedar Hill for those people out there who may not understand? And how did the name come up and all that sort of thing? Oh, the the name is basically well, it's me and Lance. Um we've been friends. Since like, oh man, I guess grade seven, I think we met uh, wow. playing hockey, and the team we played hockey on was Cedar Hill, so that's why we named the group. Well, he wanted. I didn't even know that you guys actually played hockey together too, man. Yeah, yeah, for a little bit before he went up to Double A and all that stuff. We Where? played. Uh, I didn't know it was that offensive. Yeah, Scarborough, yeah. See, yeah. Man, that's what I love doing this. You learn stuff, man. That's crazy, man. You know, I was supposed to be a hockey player too, man. You know, I was supposed to be a goalie, man. I was a goalie, man. I was a goalie. I'm goalie. You goalie too, man? Are you yeah, sure? I was a goalie, yeah. So was I, I mean, yeah. you never had that top, man. You was a goalie too? Oh, yeah, man. Are you serious? Lance was, Lance was a beast, man. Lance was a, a really good hockey player. He was dope, man. Yeah, I, I never heard about Lance, man. He got yeah. that little, you can see, he got that little, he could be a little Tiger Williams or a little, a little, uh, <laughs> what's the name? What's the name of the little bruiser from the Leafs? The guy from Bruiser from the Leafs? Oh, I don't mean. the name. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was about to do this. Watch. We you know your hockey. Watch. I was about to go like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about in the playoffs. Yeah, surprise album. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow, we all got that tie. That's crazy. No wonder we're friends. There's so many levels of friendship, man. It's dope, man. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, if I if I swear if I wasn't a, if I wasn't an MC, I would be a goal. Listen, I'd go, Bucky I would Reddick it. was playing for, for Winnipeg, and he was a black goalie, yeah. and I went to be a goalie. <laughs> Okay, that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was it. Yo, Ken Dryden, Ken Dryden. I went to Huron Street Public School and downtown, and Ken Dryden was on uh, the one block from my school, Admiral Road. We used as kids, we used to go to his house, go to his, my friend. I had these two kids from my school. They lived on like three houses away from his place. Isn't that crazy, man? And I met Marty. I spent, and when I toured, I spent, I knew this tour manager I toured with when I was touring with Soul Decision. Um, this dude, Ivan, Ivan Copeland, he used to manage Sade and another act, whatever, but he knew all the hockey players. He would skate with Mario Lemieux, oh. all of them. He knows Gretzky, all of them. And he found out, hear this crazy story. He found out I wanted to be a goalie and he really took to me, right? Go start something, hook you up, man. Cause he thought it was cool. Our brother knew hockey so, so well, right? Being from California, he was like, this is crazy, right? 
He's a California yeah. dude, long hair, red hair, crazy California surfer dude. Anyway, so we got to New Jersey, and on the same night, it's still niche. Check this night. I met busy. I walked out of the hall. I see Art Kelly. It was the first time Art Kelly went pub was out in public in like five years. He went to New Jersey. I was like, Art Kelly, what the hell? Then I go around the corner to have a smoke. I hear this. I rub it to the beat, the beat, the busy B. Yeah, and I, I go, who could this be? I'm hanging with Busy B, man. That's when wow. I met Busy B, the legendary. I never told a story before. I hang with the legendary list, Busy B. I'm tired, alone. Half an hour in the hallway, like an arena backstage. I'm kicking with Busy B. I'm like, this is trippy, dude. Then I go back to my dressing room. This is all within, this is all within like 20, half an hour, 20 minutes. And then Ivan's like, yo, Thrust, I got you surprised. He's here. I go, what are you talking about? Remember I told you I was going to surprise you? I go, yeah. I'm going to the dressing room. I go in the dressing room. Marty Bredor. You guys are goalies. That's why I'm telling this story. I got to hang with Marty Bredor and his son because he wanted to come to the show for like an hour and a half alone, my G. Marty Isn't that Bredor. crazy, man? That's when he was going through that divorce and he had that crazy affair and all that little thing was going on. It was right yeah. then, man. Yeah, man. So it's interesting, man. I got close to the just as close still. as I got to the dream, man. Well, I, I said I was supposed to be you, sir. Shout out Despair for um, shouting out Pokey Reddick, though, because that guy was like classic. I know, uh, man. You go. That's when you know you're hockey, man. That's when you know yeah. we know a hockey, dude. We oh, we hockey dudes. Though. You can't be in Canada and not know you're hockey, bro. Hey, but remember, I was saying awesome, director awesome. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna get, we're gonna get my boy on here, and we're gonna toss a real hockey. I'm not even gonna let out the guests because everybody gonna run and grab the guests. But we're gonna have a hockey. Nish, you gonna come in on it? If we got the hockey one. You want to yeah. come back with us? I got a special hockey one. I'm gonna do. I think if you think deeply, you know what I'm saying. Think polka dots and don't say the name out loud. Think hip hop and polka dots. If you're from Toronto, you know what I'm saying, Nish. And I get that yeah. guess, right? That's the best quote yeah. I could say. The rapper name. You have to be from can my age to know that. Can you name another goalie from Winnipeg that era? No, but he did that autobiography on all the pl- on the on all the black hockey players from the NHL. That's another clue. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking no, about I'm now? Saying, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm saying but I'll get no, him. I'm, I'm going to get I'm him saying, and all of us can crush it. Yeah, what are you saying? Can you name another goalie, I mean, another goalie from that era with Pokey Reddick's era in Winnipeg? <laughs> oh, no, I can't do, I can't do that. Wasn't, there, uh, wasn't it, um, what's his name, Grant? Uh, oh, Grant Fuhrer. Grant yeah. Fuhrer. Yeah, okay. that's another one. Grant Fuhrer was. On, Win- on Winnipeg? At, no, Edmonton. Not on Winnipeg, no. On Edmonton. Not in Winnipeg, though. Oh, okay. But yeah. Edmonton, though. Yeah, Edmonton, yeah. Close yeah. enough. Yeah. Cousins. Cousin City. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. It's crazy. No, I, I, we're I, a Canadian I was, I was panel, a right? We're a Canadian panel. We have to talk hockey one day. Yeah, we're going to have to talk yeah. hockey, man. Hip-hop and hockey got a lot in common anyways. You know. <laughs> yeah, I prefer I heard, I, I heard a scam. I heard a scam podcast. He said he was super into hockey too. Oh, scam play hockey every set. Scam still play hockey. If you call scam every, he always play hockey. We did all those records. Scam would have to go play hockey first to come back. Was, was just, and Esplanade, the rink was just down the street. But Esplanade, if you know it, Esplanade, the rink was close. So he would always literally go all them joints, Boiling Point, every song Scam did. Dear Hip Hop, when he made all those beats, all those songs, he would just he had to go play hockey and come back. And That's he'd come true. back, that drop was- the bag. And if you knew Scam, and then we sit in this room, in that little room in Esplanade, at the front there, his poor mom, his mom is the best, dude. Scam's that mother was... Those were amazing, that era for Yo, Scam, man. Those hip-hop moms are the best. Salute the hip-hop moms, if you're watching. From Miss and- Edna on down to everybody. Because those houses where you can make that noise, man. You know what I mean? Speaking Scam of goalies, too, like, you, do you guys remember Vasatoskala from the Leafs? He was yeah. the goalie on the Leafs. Yeah, he was out on the Esplanade too. I was out at uh, one of the bars down there, uh, beer market, I think. And he was out on the uh, yeah. just uh, having a, a, a butt out there, and uh, just got to hang with him for a couple of minutes, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool bumping in players, man. Certain players are like, oh my goodness, man. Sports players is weird. You just catch people in the weirdest spots, man. Yeah. Especially walk a little bar, like, hey, man. You know what I mean? I'm. I walked into. I was. In, I was in Kansas. I walked into this thing. I was in Kansas two minutes. Like, I didn't know Kansas are. Can- if you, let me tell you something about a little magic city. If you're into the NFL, you want to go to a city that's rocking, that's a surprise, go to Kansas City, man. You see it in the football yeah, games, but that city is live. I go, what kind of city is this, man? They go, oh, people don't know we do it like this up here. It was crazy. I never seen it. It was like one of those movies when you go into this American town and everything is just, wherever you go, everything is live. Anyways, I walked this bar. I turned to the right, oh. was there? One minute. 
Hey, what up, man? I see War and Moon. I sit down. I have a drink of War and Moon. Do two seconds. It's what it's just. Sometimes you just walk in those spaces. You know what I'm saying? But the Toronto's nice. You hang downtown Esplanade, you'll see everybody, especially around uh, Rogers Center. You just hang around there. You see Raptors. This that. I see so many people in the day, man. I see Sam Mitchell watch walk through all the fans, all the fans down thing, and they didn't turn their head, man, down there. They didn't know who he was. <laughs> Except for me. I was like, yo, this is crazy, man. Mm-hmm. He just walked through 12,000 people, man. You don't even know who Sam Mitchell is. I go, that's Sam Mitchell. And then I, I saw Sam Mitchell like four times the same day. It's Medina and Dundas. Like, it's just cool, man. But that's why Toronto's a cool city. You can walk around. So sports yeah, players, come to our city. You'll love it. You yep. will get taken. You will get taken care of. Trust me. <laughs>